Hey, it's Zach and I'm back and welcome back to the whiteboard. Yes, we got the whiteboard up. <laughs> so that's funny around here because we've been making a big joke in the office in the warehouse. But listen, we're here on another inside look and the topic that we're talking about this month is the inside look on the REO market. So this is your training on the insider look on the REO market. And what this is all about is to help you guys understand a few things like what the REO market's doing, the good, the bad, the ugly, how we find the right agents. We're also going to be talking about the types of agents that we're going to be looking for and I've got five step system that I'm going to share with you right here on this video and this five step system will allow you to determine the right markets it'll allow you to find the right agents it'll allow you to set up the right systems so that you can get the best deals in the market so let's go ahead and jump into this so that you guys can really pay attention to what we're doing also the best part about this is, is there's even more training besides just this and so I'm going to get to that in a little bit but let's talk about the REO market the good the bad and the ugly obviously you see up a little down decline market here because depending on where you are in the market right now if you're on the California Arizona if you're in Vegas if you're in Phoenix or Florida or up even the Northeast your REO market is probably seeing a huge change right now meaning that the inventory is low uh, your, your inventory on the market's low and, and that's a, a sign that one that the market's coming back obviously that we're gonna start to see a major upswing in the market but also for all of you that are in the Midwest you're probably not seeing the same exact so we're kind of in the middle but on the outsides we're running out of inventory so this training is really to help you guys understand what to do if you're in the middle and you have a lot of inventory and what to do if you're on the outskirts and you still want to play in this REO market before it goes away we probably have about 12 I'm gonna make a prediction 12 to 18 months that's what I'm gonna say left of this you know this market that we've been living in with all these REOs across the country so what's the good what's the bad about this well just what I said depending on where you live there is good and bad good could be you have a lot of inventory which means there's a lot to pick from but there's also could be bad to that right bad being that your prices haven't fluctuated out they haven't stabled off and so the banks can still keep dropping prices which would eventually end up hurting you the good for the outskirts of the US and the California markets Arizona Vegas Florida and so forth the good is is that the inventory is drying up the bad is that the inventory is drying up <laughs> so you know we just have to look at this from how are we going to position ourselves and how is that going to look for us if we're still playing in that REO market so so here's some things that you want to do when it comes to determining the right areas the first thing I want you to do is create a spreadsheet and you want to go in every zip code and you want to know how many houses have sold per zip code then you want to determine out of those houses that have sold next you want to know how many listings are on the market right now and then once you know that then you want to know out of those listings how many of those are REOs because then what we can start to put together is a ratio we can say look we're averaging X amount of listings per month and we can track that so we pull that by 12 months so we can start to see if the listings are dropping in a certain zip code so that means that the inventory is drying up so we have a better understanding or is it going up which means more REOs are coming on the market which means we need to adjust our pricing on our resale um, based on that and then we need to know about REOs what's the percentage of listings that are REOs in your market right now these are all telltale signs that will give us an idea for future projections on what the market's actually doing is it going to go up is it going to go down in REOs do I need to start changing my marketing strategy but the reality is is there's so many more REOs out there and we just need to jump on them as fast as possible and that's how we're going to know what our ratio is now I know that this is just a quick whiteboard training but I'm going to be doing an even more in-depth training uh, next week on this so it's going to help you put all this together and understand exactly what I'm doing now the other thing is all about finding the agent right because this is where a lot of people kind of run into a, a little bit of a problem is they they get in their market and they're like hey you know the agents I'm talking to just aren't giving me the right leads or the agent I'm talking to just doesn't know what they're doing or you know I can't find a good agent or there's just all these things that happen and it's not that they're not there it's just you need to go look for them and maybe not in the same places you've always looked for them at. because if you're just working with an agent that was referred to you by your aunt or your uncle or your cousin more than likely they're not the right agent for you so some of the resources I'm going to give you here is number one is if you go to realtor.com and you put in there what type of agent you're looking for 
You can search by keywords. So you can say REOs, investment, cash flow, um, handyman specials, fixer uppers, investment properties. You can do all these things in there and it'll pull you up agents that specifically have that in their criteria, okay? The next one is Zillow. Now, if you guys saw my whiteboard training on Zillow um, uh, last week, then you'll see that there's so much more we can do with Zillow, and that was just a short training. There's even more than that we can do with Zillow. But inside Zillow, one of the key things I want to tell you about is if you go to that filter feature that I showed you last Monday in the whiteboard training, then what you'll see is, is that in that filter, you can uncheck everything in there except for foreclosures. So what does that mean? It's only going to show you the foreclosure properties on the market, and then we can start looking at those properties to see who the agents are that we need to contact on those. And that's another beautiful way of going at it. And Trulia does a very similar process, so we can do that in Trulia as well. Now, if you're looking for that star agent, if you're looking to be able to find the agent who performs the most in the market, then what you want to do is you want to go to Redfin. Um, Redfin is a service that you can go to to see who is the highest performer in your marketplace. Who's the one selling all the properties? Who's the one that's closing the most deals? Redfin can give us that information. And then on the other side, if you're just trying to keep more resources available, go to realestateagent.com and you can see who the agents are in your market, who's marketing themselves out there to be able to help put all that together. Now guys, obviously this is just a jump start to get you guys to understand how we go after the REO markets working with an agent, um, but I still have my five steps coming, okay? So let me, um, let me clear this board off and I'm going to get right back to you, all right? All right, we're back with more training. So let's look at this. So we've already covered the main parts of what you need to do, why the market is what it is. Who, what, the, um, what the agents are out there, how we find those agents, and what you need to be looking at in the good and the bad. Now, what I want you to pay attention to is really about the types of agents we're going after, okay? Because this is where a lot of people get mixed up. So even when you're searching for them, there's a certain type of agent we're looking for. And really what it boils down to is what we know is the 80-20 rule, okay? So what is the 80-20 rule? And, what, and who are the 80 and who are the 20? Right? Well, the 80-20 rule is like this. In most REO listing agents that are in your marketplace or in other marketplace, 80% of the inventory goes to what's called a primary agent in your market. That means one agent gets all those 80% of listings. And then the 20% of inventory left over is filtered out amongst other agents. So you have obviously your primary agent who basically has everything. And then you have, you know, with all this other inventory, it starts getting spit out to all these other agents, okay? And so the idea behind that is that you want to pay attention to who they are and where they're at, and you'll know that by finding more and more of these agents and seeing who has the preferred listings in the area. Now the key is, is this is the agent we want the biggest relationship with because they have the most inventory. The downside to that is, is they have, because they have the most inventory, they have the most buyers, okay? So that means you're going to have what's called multiple bidding. You're, in some cases, you may end up, may have to pay retail for the property. So let's think, why would anyone pay retail for a property? Well, think about it. On a 2-1, you can absolutely pay retail because we could do what's called, um, we could do what's called build out appreciation. So we could build a master bedroom with a master bath and turn that into a 3-2 and then we get the push in the marketplace. So if your marketplace is $100 a square foot, but yet you can go in and build out for $40 a square foot, then you have a $60 a square foot spread just on that initial addition. Now, also understand this as a wholesaler, that could be important for you too because when you're acquiring the right buyers who do build outs and not just the cosmetic stuff, well that's huge for you because then what can happen is, is you can find these two ones at a decent price and be able to wholesale it over to them. So these are things you need to think about when we're targeting those. So the 80% of the agents out or the 80% of the inventory that goes to the primary agent it's going to take a little while to cultivate that relationship, but when you do, you can get first day on market, you can a lot of times get inventory from them before they even put it on the market because they're letting everybody basically come in and buy. Now, the other side is targeting these agents here. Now, when we target those agents, we need to be very clear with them that we don't want any inventory unless they have the listing, right? Because if we're working with this person, we want to buy from them if they bring us their inventory. These people, we want to only buy their inventory, primary agent and a secondary agent. On the other side of that, what you want to think about is, 
is that when we're working with these agents, we need to let them know that when they have inventory to give us a primary shot at it, to give us the opportunity to put first offer in. And that's going to come out in our five-step system, what's called setting alerts. And uh, so this is really the relationship. And here's the beauty. With these agents, they don't have all the inventory, so their buyer pools are not as much. So you have a better chance of getting a better deal from these second agents than you do the primary agents. But here's another little secret tip. If you have one of these agents right here, and that agent lives in a different market, then the market that's listing, those are primary, those are awesome, because we'll look to see who the who is, and does that listing agent live in this city I'm buying the house from, or in another city? Because if they live in another city, then they don't really want to come to that city, they don't want to have to put a lot of work into it, they just want to get rid of it, which is good for you, because that means we can come in and give them an idea of what it's, it is, the shape it's in, because most of them don't even drive over to look at it. So that's something that you want to think about when you're targeting what we call the 80% of inventory rule and the 20% of inventory rule. Now, when you understand all that and you, and you get a good grasp of what's going on and you're moving out in the market to try to pick up what inventory is left or really start your REO marketing business, the next thing that we have to really think about is setting up the systems, okay? Because you know me and systems. I'm all about systems, process, systemize, automate, right? So that's what we're going to do. Create a process, we're going to systemize that, and then we're going to automate it. So the very first one is obviously segmenting. So if you've been to my boot camp or you've come train live with me in Huntsville, then you're very aware of the fact that I'm big on market segmentation. You can't do anything without market segmentation. You can't even tell anyone how to help you without market segmentation. So we have to do market segmentation to know the zip codes in our market, to know which ones we want to be working in. So then, then when we go find the agent, so step two is find the agent after you do market segmentation. So in step two, when we find that agent, then we can do step three with meet with them so that we can let them know what segmentation is, what areas we want to be looking at properties in that meet the qualification for wholesale deals or, or rehab deals. So we're not wasting their time, right? So that's just the step four, which is we have to give them a filter. And what is a filter? Well, the filter is, is when we say to them, okay, look, here's my market segmentation, here's the areas I'm interested in, and why the times of the year I'm interested in them, then here's my filter. I'm looking for three ones and greater, 1,500 square feet and more, first days on market, 90 days on market, and so we can build out a filter process, and the beauty of that is I'm going to work with you guys next week on what these systems look like, how to put this system into more of an automated process, what to say, when to say it, how to get the agent, and we're also going to be talking about the filter. What's the best filters to use in your market right now for these REO deals, okay? And then that leads us to the fifth and final one in the system, but the most important one, which is set auto alerts, okay? What's an auto alert? Well, an auto alert is when we work with an agent, put those filters in place, we can build what's called an automated alert system with that agent. So we're notified of our criteria. And that's the important part of next week. Okay? Find out as much as possible so that you can be the best investor you can in the beautiful REO market in certain parts of the country and how to still capitalize on this REO market in some of the surrounding areas like California, Arizona, Nevada, maybe it seems for you guys, the way you're living in those markets. The inventory is becoming very slim. So you need to have an advantage over everyone else on how to get that inventory. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to click the register button below and register for the live training we're gonna do next week so that you can figure out how to capitalize on this. It's by far the only live training we're doing this month, so you want to jump on because we won't do another live training until next month. We're kind of changing the, the program around here, but I hope you're enjoying all these trainings. I hope you're enjoying the Whiteboard um, Mondays. I hope you're enjoying the Insider Circle training that we're doing right here so you guys get a better understanding of this marketplace. So do that right now. Go ahead, register for the training below. If you got your ebook, I hope you know the first part. We got you here to this training so you can see the rest of it. But guys, I'll see you on the live training next week. Go ahead and register. Uh, do it right now before you forget about it. That way you can get reminders. We'll also email out in a couple of days. See you soon.